Hi, I'm Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. Thanks for joining us for this IPA talk. And with me, I've got Matt Stemak. Matt is the principal at Eastwood Elementary School in East Alton, Illinois. Correct. Matt, appreciate you being here. We're going to talk a little bit about mindfulness and, and utilizing that as a strategy uh, related to helping kids work through various behaviors and things. But uh, Matt, before getting into that, thought it'd be nice just to hear a little bit about you and your your career, anything like that that you'd be willing to share. It's just you and I talking okay. here. Don't. <laughs> so, I, 27 years in the same school district, wow. which I'm very proud of. In that fact, doesn't happen very lo no, much anymore. No, it doesn't. And actually, this is the same school district that I went to school in. Wow. So very proud of that. Uh, you mean so they had you back they, after you got through then, They right? got me back, yes. <laughs> very good. Um, I, I started off as a middle school science and social studies teacher, mm -hmm. was an athletic director for the middle school, dean of students, uh, actually, I was then district principal where I traveled around to all the buildings and that was a great learning experience to see how our preschool and our um, elementary buildings all interacted with the middle school because up to that time I'd only been in the middle school. Mm -hmm. And then um, then I became principal at Eastwood about eight years ago, nine years ago. And um, like I like to say that I've done everything but drive the bus. I bet. And I'm careful not to say that in front of my <laughs> superintendent. Well, don't get the certification, <laughs> right? Don't get that kind of license. You should be in good shape. So just talk to us a little bit about your school, Matt. Uh, you know, what, about your kids, your, your staff, some things maybe you're grateful for that are going on right now in your building. Well, so we serve um, about 70% free and reduced population. Okay. Uh, we have amazing staff at Eastwood and at the middle school and our great our district overall. Uh, what I think I'm most grateful for is that I think our teachers understand the importance of building those relationships mm -hmm. with the kids and uh, that's probably what I'm most grateful for in my building is that teachers really understand the importance of uh, relationships. That's terrific. Well Matt, part of the reason that we've got you here um, is you and your counterpart down there in your school district, Kelly Decker, yes. uh, who's the principal at the middle school there at East Alton, Middle School uh, did an outstanding presentation at our annual conference here uh, back this last Thank October uh, and, and really got into this concept of, of mindfulness and how to utilize that as an effective strategy uh, with regards to helping manage student discipline and behavior and, and helping kids uh, you know maybe work through some issues themselves and, and hopefully make better choices moving forward. So. If you wouldn't mind, could you just kind of set that up, uh, talk us through a little bit about uh, this concept and, and maybe what you discussed with the participants back here in the fall. Okay, well, for years we've had a in-school suspension room. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, had many different names, but it really was an in-school suspension room for our grade school and middle school staff. Uh, we had an opportunities uh, to change that and when we started looking at surveys that our teachers filled out about what their needs and wants were and what they were happy with and not happy with. Um, it was apparent that they weren't happy with the results of what our in-school suspension room was, was, was doing for us. It wasn't changing behavior. So we started looking at what we could do to help change those behaviors um, and we came upon the, the mindfulness room. And so then we thought about who we started listing what are the qualities we want for a mindfulness room teacher? And when we started listing those qualities, we actually had someone on staff who met that. So what kind of qualities would you be looking for in we're, someone to staff a, a room like we're that? We're looking for one, someone who's patient, mm -hmm. who has empathy for others, um, who has a strong um, foundation in academics as well because the students go in there and they're still expected to do their work. Right. Um, and someone who's open-minded. And we had that in uh, Mrs. Steiniger, who's a mindfulness room teacher. She had taught middle school at one time. She was an elementary teacher. Uh, she had taught in a co-taught special ed classroom. So she just had all those qualities and that's yeah. the person we looked at. And um, when we talked to her about it, first she was nervous. Mm -hmm. But building relationships with people, she trusted us, myself and Kelly and our superintendent, um, Ms. Warnicky about moving forward with this. Yeah. So when so we're talking about this being the mindfulness room. Yes. So in your school is that what it's known as then it's, between the staff and the students? It is called the mindfulness room. So yes. so when people were, would walk in there, Matt, what would people see? 
they would see uh, Ms. Steiniger sitting there working with some students, maybe working on strategies or techniques on how to control their behavior or, mm -hmm. or being more mindful of themselves. Um, she also helps them with their academics. Uh, some students go in there to, for a check-in or check-out throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, if they need to take a, uh, if their behavior plan calls that they have a calm down area, they go there. Mm -hmm. um, it's based a lot on conscious discipline and um, Schubert's classroom. Okay. And, and so there's a there's a cool down area. There's a there's a kitchen table that she has a meeting with her students mm -hmm. every morning with her who are in there, and they talk about. Um, what they can do, what the expectations are, and she calls it her family. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I, I heard, because um, I, I wasn't, due to conference being busy, yes. wasn't here, able to get in and, and see your presentation, but I heard about is that, uh, that you guys, w with, with regards to this concept of, of mindfulness, um, also try to work through some sensory kinds of things for kids. Is, is that correct? Yes. I hear that. So what is that, what is that uh, or explain that concept to me. Well, so Ms. Uh, Seiger might teach yoga to some of our students. Wow. Uh, zones of regulation. So some students are in there, they, they come in periodically for a calm down or check-in, and, and she also has a morning group that she meets with, and those, and those students especially um, work on on mindfulness, they do yoga, they might talk about zones of regulation, how the brain works. Mm, wow, that's impressive. Yes. So through the day then, Matt, um, you know, you're talking about students that might utilize this yes. for, for check-in purposes, so they know that's an expectation for them um, even as the day gets started, yes. correct? So would this though be a place then, if, if an incident were to, to happen with a student, that you might pull you know, a kid out of the regular classroom, yes. for lack of a better way of explaining it, and, and have that student maybe go to here. So in, in lieu of like a traditional in-school suspension type of room, or, or even tougher yet, even removing a kid from the educational environment altogether. Correct, so some students will go in during maybe uh, their lunch and recess mm -hmm. time to work on an apology because they, um, of a behavior in the classroom, so they, they, they work on that restorative justice piece of it and, and maybe they work on an apology or, or they do a reflection sheet with Ms. Steiniger of what they did and what they could have done differently mm -hmm. to avoid that situation. Some students are assigned there for multiple days at a time depending on the um, severity of their infraction. Yeah, so when you look at, at the Im impact of this, how long have you been utilizing the mindfulness room? This is our school? second year. Okay, so what, what has been the, the impact then and just in terms of discipline overall and when you think about it's hard to even call this like an in-school suspension type of room because this is a place where where kids are, are learning how to self-regulate, yes. correct, and also continuing to get academic support. Um, but it, when you think about discipline overall or the culture of your building, um, what what influence has this room had? Well, I think it's had a very positive influence because one, the teachers understand what the student is going there for and what's expected of that student while they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, we've had to make some adjustments along the way because whenever you start something new, you know, unforeseen circumstances arise. Yeah. So one of the things I did do, especially for those students who were in there for multiple days, I actually brought a piece of the old ISS room back of, of where teachers can communicate via a Google Sheet of what the academic requirements are for that student to do. Yeah. And also then a point system that that student has to earn before they move back into the regular classroom. Mm -hmm. And that was just a good accounting piece that, that the teachers understood what the student was doing and, and that Ms. Steinger also understood what was expected from that academic yeah. side. Yeah. And so you will see that you know, students will come in for multiple days or sometimes they come in for uh, during their lunch and recess or some other time of the day to, to do a reflection sheet, to work on a skill that they could, a, a skill they could utilized so they can stay calmer. Mm -hmm. And overall, I think it, it's had a, a, a very positive effect on our uh, discipline. Yeah, so with regards to kind of how do you, how do you administrate this, this type of facility, um, does, does all of that typically have to work through you as the building leader, or do you recognize now uh, where, where teachers are working directly with Mrs. Steiniger maybe to 
you know, have a student spend some time there if, if needed be. I'm, I'm just curious yes. about for those that might be interested and, you know, how do we wrap our hands around this thing and, and make sure that it works appropriately within the, within the school day? So some students are, are assigned via me because yeah. of an incident. Uh, other students, it's because we have a behavior plan for that student mm -hmm. and that they, part of that behavior plan is that they have a place to go if they need to calm down yeah. or check, uh, check in with. Mm -hmm. And then there are a couple of kids, uh, students who, uh, teachers have a relationship with Mrs. Steininger and they go there to just calm down or to take a breather. Mm -hmm. And that's so, sometimes teachers are working directly with Ms. Steininger um, with that, but, but I or Kelly are aware of that, yeah. that that's going on. Yeah, so kind of wrapping this back to, to the beginning just a little bit, you, you talked about, um, you surveyed the staff, you know, related to suspensions, mm -hmm. and you know, we're, we're getting feedback from them from their perspective, and I'm sure it was right, that that was not getting the intended results, that behaviors were not changing. Um, so when you looked at implementing this, this concept, you know, anytime we look at, as a school leader, maybe implementing a new initiative, the concern's gonna be buy-in. You yes. know, people are gonna uh, grab a hold of the, the vision of this. Uh, how did that process go? Did you feel like, because you had this data from the teachers, that, um, that this idea would, would be successful or, or something that they would buy into? How did, how did that process work for you? So when we looked at what the student data was, and we looked at the surveys from the teachers, we knew that uh, as an administrative team, we knew we needed to make some changes. And yeah. when the opportunity arose, we, we took that. Uh, you know, as you know, many people don't like things, but they don't like change more. <laughs> right, right. So we had to get buy-in from the staff. Yeah. And one of the things we did was we we talked with them and we showed them the data and we and we we shared the vision with them. Yeah. It's I'm fortunate that I've been in the district for a lot a lot of years. Mm -hmm. um, so you had trust yourself. I, had, and, I built some yeah. trust over the years. Mm -hmm. and they, I believe that most. I believe that teachers believe that. I want to do what's best and right. They might not always like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they do believe that we have the best interest of kids at heart. Yeah, I'm just thinking, and this is a little bit off topic here, Matt, but I think it's a worthy digression. Um, something that IPA uh, has been looking at here quite a bit recently is this concept of principal churn and turnover um, and how, and the statistic that I share is that if we were to hire four principals today in the new positions. They could be veterans, uh, such as yourself, or they could be individuals that are new into the profession. The national statistics show that in five years, only one of those people will still be in that same seat. And we say that is a real problem. And you, you've talked about how in your district, you've been there your entire mm -hmm. career. You've been in this position now nine years. Yes. Uh, I gotta, I've gotta believe that that's been a, a pretty worthy asset to you, especially now as you're trying to lead your building and. People know you, they know what to expect, and, and you're able to maybe get things done more effectively. Uh, yes, I, I, can't, I can't imagine trying to go to a new building and, and trying to implement this yeah. in year one without teacher buy-in or having some teacher faith in you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm fortunate because, and, and East Alton's fortunate because Kelly has been teaching in the district for 16 years before, she, wow. 14 or 15 years before she became principal, building mm -hmm. principal at the middle school. So we have a very solid um, group of administrators who've been in the district for a number of years. Um, and so it's just, it's really hard, I think, to build that trust. You have to build those relationships. We talk a lot of times about teachers need to build relationships with students. Well, yeah. principals need to build those relationships with teachers and staff as well. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, well, bringing back this back to the topic at hand here overall, and and not to put uh, maybe at the risk rather of putting words into into Kelly's mouth. Have have you guys compared notes at all? You know, with regards to how you see this working in in the elementary school versus middle school. Are are you seeing some things similar from your perspective, or are there challenges at one building versus the other oh, uh, with this? There's definitely challenges. Uh, in our presentation, there's one mindfulness room for the for the K-8 uh, okay. buildings. And we are separated by a small road, I mm -hmm. would call an alley. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that can be um, like the Atlantic Ocean crossing yeah. it. Uh, so there are some challenges. The, the 
room is in my building, so it's a little easier for me to move a student in there for an hour or for them to go check in and out with Ms. Steiniger. Uh, looking at resources, it's something that we would love to have a second one, but you know, everyone has limited resources yeah. for that. Um, she uses, her, so there's that challenge. But I do believe she also, and her teachers would also say that it has been very beneficial for that reteaching expectation. Yeah, that's great. Well, Matt, not to put you on the spot here, and, and I'm going to take a risk. Uh, we are videotaping, so we can always yes. edit, edit this out. But uh, if people wanted to come and take a look at, at your mindfulness room, would you guys be open to that? We there would be very Salton? open to that at any time with anyone. We've had some uh, districts come and look at it before. We're fortunate because our, our Board of Education and our superintendent put the resources in in place and we have this again a certified teacher a veteran teacher in there that's how important we thought that yeah. room was yeah to absolutely. be successful absolutely well I'm grateful for that and I'm sure some others so Matt Stemack here with me principal at Eastwood Elementary School in East Alton thanks for joining me here thank I appreciate you sir. that thank you again for joining us for this IPA talk for all related information and links be sure to check out the description below my name is Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. If there's anything that the IPA can do for you, don't hesitate to check us out on the web at ilprinciples.org. Take care.